勝負かのHello? Oh, hey. That was weird. My mic was on, but it wasn't actually picking up sound. I was talking to no one. It's been 17 days. Oh, oops. I've been busy with garbage, or tired, or both. Actually, I wasn't really saying that much, because I didn't have that much in the chat to respond to, and then I got the combo and was like, yeah! I did it! I gotta tell everyone I did it, and then I realized, oh wait, no one's gloating with me. for a little while longer. I have a lot of science junk to do. Maybe I'll have a chance to stream tomorrow or something. Because I... have science. To do. No, I was working on Hat World today. I work on it every day. Oops. Just a little bit. Crap. No. Why would you do this? I got 100,000 points on level 1. And no points on level 3, because I'm dead. soon. I mean, theoretically, winter break is coming up, but realistically, no. Oh, crap. Because I kind of have to do more junk over break, because then I have to present it early January, which kind of sucks. I have to hope I get, like, actual results from this. If I don't, it'll be embarrassing. Sonic Riders tonight. Sonic Riders is hot garbage. I'm gonna go take some melatonin. 
which doesn't work, but I take it anyway. Three hours of sleep. Ah, science. Why is it my fault that the experiment isn't working? Because it should work. There's no reason why it shouldn't. Someone did something very similar to this and got results that worked and were promising. So, I don't know. So I really want garbage food. What happened to my Photoshop adventures? Uh, I haven't anything I needed to Photoshop yet. I mean, there are more game assets. Do I do it orally or sublingual? I just pop a five milligram, I think? Melatonin? Five or ten, don't remember. Five sounds about right. If I know it should work, why do the experiment? Someone's not a scientist! Because you don't actually know if anything works or not until you do it. And even then, you still don't know, because then you have people send letters to the editor in, like, Oh, so-and-so publication, uh, I want to address the following weaknesses, this, that, and the other thing. I think further blah blah is necessary for whatever. Even after you get scientific results, you still don't know if anything is real. I don't know if anything's real, just in general. I don't get sleep paralysis or vivid nightmares. I just have weird, interesting dreams. But they're usually okay. But yeah, I'm not gonna do any more Photoshop work right now. Um, I could, but... Hat World, when it is being apparently re-released, I don't know all the details. Um, some of the art assets are being redone, so I know the character portraits are being fixed up, which is good because they don't really look very good. Um, but like, in addition to that, I don't know how much is actually going to change. So right now I'm just translating the script. I don't want to do all the assets because they might change. Um, I don't want to have to redo them all twice. I did a few. So if I want to take a couple screenshots, I mostly have stuff for that. Um, but yeah, right now I'm focusing on the script, which should be able to be more modul modularly uh, added to the uh, updated version of the game without having to change much else. Because, I mean, it's RPG Maker, it's a simple copy-paste job. Unless they decide, oh, RPG Maker is too limited for our remake purposes and we are going to put it in Game Maker or something, to which I will have no recourse at all. That'll well, probably be somewhat doable. I feel like it's probably not super hard to unpack Game Maker games and change the assets, but it's not what I know. I gotta take a break from working on Hat World. I'm up to the third boss. The third boss area. The second boss area needs to be renamed because it's called that. It's called Guilty Ancient. Which 
judging by the Japanese name, it looks like it's closer to, like, Guilty Ruins? Kinda? But even still, that doesn't really make a whole hell of a lot of sense. I didn't actually play through the area yet, I just scrubbed it for dialogue and then did that. Do I enjoy Hat World? Oh uh, yeah, it's alright. The problem is, it's hard to enjoy exactly the same as you may enjoy it, or anybody else would enjoy it, because I have to play through parts so many times. Especially when I was keeping uh, a Japanese version and an English version. Who's texting me? Oh, go away, Twitch. A Japanese version and an English version of the saves running concurrently, so I could find the text in Japanese, or read the text in Japanese, then find it in the English version, and then translate that, because I was having a hard time finding where the text was, and then uh, doing that. Um, so I'd have to play everything twice. I kind of stopped doing that. Right now, I'm just using, um... Using, um... The English version of the save, which works, but the problem is some of the names are garbled, which makes some cutscene or cutscenes not give the right person the right line of dialogue, but it's not a huge deal. But yeah, it takes a long time. Because I'm constantly playing and replaying certain parts and then forgetting to save. It's like, ah, that's where that dialogue is. Great, I'm gonna close this out and go and write it. Ning, oh wait, I forgot to save, so now I have to go back and redo that. So it's fun, but like the sense of progression that you have when you're working on it like this is not direct or anything. It's just like, um. It's just, uh, kind of tedious and roundabout, because everything you do, you end up having to do, like, twice, not more. I just want to get to the fun proofreading part. Proofreading day of reckoning where I decide how much I want to deviate from the original script. Right now it's pretty much not at all, but it's also very, very dull. Which I'm not really happy with, because I could do better. Why not play it all the way through normally and then translate? Because... Then I'd have to play through it all again while translating to find all the dialogue and everything like that. It just makes personally more sense to me if I'm just uh, doing it as I play. I mean, yeah, it means there are going to be parts where it's like, I don't know what any of this means because you don't have any context for it until you get later in the game. But other than that, it seems to get the job done. It's just slow. That's okay. Well, I can't do that anymore. 
No, another sheep's gonna die before my combo's finished. Oh, my combo wasn't even made right. Screw this. How's the plot? It's fine. I mean, it's... I don't know. It's gotten more interesting. But the problem is, a lot of the dungeons end up having the same dialogue. Or very similar dialogue. And it ends up being very, um... Very cookie cutter. Especially when you're talking to the bosses before you actually fight them. Because every... Every, uh... Every hat keeper has three levels. And the first level is you go, you see the boss, or you see the mid-boss in the first screen, and you talk to him, and they're like, all right, well, I'll see you later in the level, and then we'll fight in, like, coded language. And your character's like, okay, great, whatever. And then you see the character later in the game, you fight them, you destroy their stupid worldview, um, and then the world keeper pops up and is all, hey, wait a minute, what are you doing in my world? You're breaking everything, stop it. And then your character is all, oh, I want your hat, I'm going to take your hat. Haha. -ha. Um, to which the other person's like, oh, no, you can't. I'm, I'm using this for things. And then your character's like, ah, they're still too strong. I'll come back and fight you later. So then you come back and do the next area where you see the mid-boss on the first screen. And then you talk to the mid-boss and then you go later into the level and then... It's very much the same thing, and the problem is that your character has a lot of the same dialogue from, like, thing to thing, where it's all, Oh no, I can't fight now, it's too di or too dangerous, or next time I see you, I'm taking your hat, or something like that. It's always the same. Not even rephrased. I've been rephrasing it, because I'm too lazy to go back and see what I wrote for it initially, but... There's a lot of that, where all the conversations are kind of just, like... I did this already. Um, now granted, you might not notice or might not be as bothered by it as I am because I've been looking at it way longer than anybody else other than like the creator might have been. So like all the time that I spent going through all the different dialogue trees uh, before, uh, what's-her-face, Jocko popped up and was like, Hey, look, yo, you gotta stop taking these hats, alright, or we're gonna have to kill you. Um, there were, I spent like hours and hours and hours playing that game and working on dumb little tangential things, little side conversations and stuff, before I got to that part where they started explaining more of the plot, but the player wouldn't have played it nearly for that long to get that same information. So like the pacing for someone who's actually playing it, it's probably, I mean, it's not the best for sure, but it's not like insufferable. And I'm making the dialogue different on each pass, even though it's initially identical in Japanese. Uh, just so... It's not, you know... As bad. Also, do people stutter a lot in real life? Because I'm noticing there's always like this, what, what's that kind of line, especially from like the the girl character who fell into your world and isn't actually part of the hat worlds or isn't a hat world avatar or any of that. Because every time she sees one of the bosses it's like, what? what's that? What's this thing? Every time. And it's always with like that hesitation to it. Do people do that in real life? What? what the? Or any of that. I mean, I write it because that's what it says. 
but it always just feels so goofy. Like it's super overplayed. Why not the original version? Oh, what's the original version? It's Puyo Puyo. Then Dream... no. The first Puyo Puyo came out, then Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Then I think Kirby's Dream Land, then I think Puyo 2. It's not even spicing up the dialogue for anyone else other than myself. Because I want people to play it and be like, Yeah, that's funny. That's a good joke. I like that. Something like that instead of like... I don't want it to feel like a dumpy fan translation. I want it to be like... Professional. Or as close to that as I can get. No! No, 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 flip it over! Oh, no! Oh, I lost. Is it an Asian thing? Because of how languages work? I mean, a lot of the time, I'm trying to think of, like, how would I write sounds of surprise? And I don't want to do, like, the AOL instant messenger, like, sound effect between asterisks or something. Because I always thought that was sort of cheap looking. Gasp! No, it, it does not accept emoji. But there's a lot of times I want to just put like, huh? What? Eh? Eh. But, I mean, you don't have that. You can't, like... It's, it's hard to write inflections for stuff. Unless you really exaggerate it. And then it's just sorta, of, eh. Also, no, I can't use more ellipses. I have a problem. I have a chronic case of ellipses overuse. If you played White Ties, you would realize, oh god, like, every other line has just ellipses in it for no reason. And the thing is, like, I think that's how most people talk. Or, like, a lot of ideas will trail off toward the end of a sentence or something. Like, there's something very weird to me about putting a period down for some sentences, because it feels so definite. But maybe that's just me. I want all my characters to be really non-committal. Oops, I didn't want to put that there. But, yeah, I'll, I'll sort it out. It'll be... Hopefully, it'll be good by the time I'm done. I mean, the more you play it, the more of a feel you get for who the characters are, so... It makes it easier to write them then, but still... See, I always put ellipses in my work emails when I'm uncertain and confused, so I guess it works. I don't use... well... No, I do use exclamation points sometimes. 
It depends on the character. Like, the really sarcastic ones don't get exclamation points. Everything is just sort of flat. Um, do I want that there? Yeah, also I want a blue. I said I want a blue. I want a blue, god damn it! Give me a blue. Give me a blue. Give me a blue. Give me a purple. Eat it, punk. Oh, no. But yeah, like, writing the stutters at- And do you make a stutter with a dash, or is it ellipses? I guess it depends on the feeling you're going for. Like, is it actually a stutter, or is it somebody trailing off? I don't know. But yeah, Hat World would be done one day. Um... Don't expect it anytime soon. See, the problem is, like, a lot of the characters... They're... Like, the, the world guardians, or whatever their names are, I don't think they ever had, like, a specific... defined name. Other than decoy, but they also call the regular enemies decoys, so it's not exactly the same. But the World Guardian mid bosses that you fight all have little philosophies that the world is based on, uh, and when you defeat them, you like undermine the world's value system, and the people who run the Hat Worlds draw their power from the strength of that world's value system, and once you undermine it, they lose power and eventually you're able to beat them, and then get the hat. But the problem is, like, they're all... kind of... like, awful caricatures. And not in, like, an insensitive way. It's not like, oh, wow, no, these are all incredibly racist. It's more just like, no, this is just sort of stupid. It's like, oh, this boss is a plant. They're gonna talk about why eating plants and animals is wrong and only photosynthesis is correct. No, they're all them. Plant lady included. And I, I guess they're supposed to be jokes? But part of me just wants to make it like... Where... You can read it and be like, Yeah, you know what? I get it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I could, I could probably see how somebody would believe this. They would be wrong. But I would... I would get it. I need a purple and a red. So... Crap, I screwed that up. Yeah, they're all stupid straw men arguments, but they're not even, like, arguments that would matter in real life. They're just, like, people who are obsessed about a certain point. Like, you meet this one character who is... I just finished writing the draft dialogue for in one of the areas I haven't streamed yet. And she's all big on forgiving sins and stuff. And keeps telling your characters like, oh, well, come over here and forgive your sins and blah, whatever. And makes this point of like, I don't hate people, I only hate you know, their sins and all of that. 
don't hate the sinner, hate the sin, and all that good stuff. And then your character goes on this tirade of like, well, you know, if you don't punish people for committing crimes, then, you know, what good is it? What good is, you know, if somebody goes and kills somebody and feels bad, if you say that's punishment enough, well, what if they just go off and kill like a, a thousand more people? You know, why don't you do something about that? And like, yeah, sure, that, that makes sense. To which, like, the other character just keeps replying, Oh, well, I love people. I don't hate people. I only hate their sins. And it's like, oh, god, there's nothing to work with on any of this. I can't even look at this and be like... I don't know. There's no, like, rational perspective to draw from and be... Oh, yes, that makes sense, I guess. It's not even like, oh, anybody can be reformed. It's just like, no, I, if you feel bad for doing bad things, that's enough. And then your character just goes and is all, you know, I'm gonna go and destroy your world and you could stop me by force or you could stick to your ideals. Okay, bye. And then you eventually fight her. And I forget what she says. It's... But I don't remember. Not a lot, surprisingly enough. Uh... Probably something dumb. In fact, almost assuredly something dumb. That's not the right script. My character is a big jerk. They're all big jerks. I mean, you come into different people's worlds and are just like... You have to destroy their... Um, their value system. It's just like a debate, but it's not really a good debate. Uh, what do they say? Uh, this goes for a long time. Oh, they don't even, they don't even, like, have any sort of, oh no, you've defeated my logic sort of thing. It's just, oh, when you were beating me up, I noticed you didn't have evil intentions, but I can't quite put my finger on what they actually are. It's like, okay, great, uh, did I win, I guess? We're we not gonna acknowledge any of this anymore? Okay. But I'm sure I can clean up a lot of this once I actually finish the game. It'll be good by then. I think the only thing that's kind of worrying me is that it's so big. Normally I would do a lot more proofreading as I went. So like the initial copy that I'm putting down wouldn't be so rough. But because of how long the game is, I just want to get something down, just so I can move to the next part, or else it'll never get done. They gave an explanation for why they want the hats, but it's probably a lie. Um... The explanation they gave was that if you have the hats, you have some sort of, like, incurable disease where your brain is gradually taken over by the spirit in the hat, and the only way to cure that disease is to destroy the hat, so we're going along, doing everyone a solid, taking their hats, and I... I was going to say destroying them, but we didn't actually do any of that. They just sort of sit around on the floor. That's the explanation. That and Capolitis. Oh, god damn it, I might have to use that. But that was the explanation that the uh, characters gave so far. And the character who magically appeared in your world all of a sudden doesn't totally buy it because... You know, the people that you go steal the hats from 
are not like, oh wow, thanks, you're doing me this huge solid by taking this parasite off my head. It's more like, no, wait, stop, I, I need this. No. And then the hat police called the providers, which look after the world and make sure people don't go nuts and destroy everything by taking everyone else's hat, shows up and is all, no, stop, you, you can't stop, you, you can't keep taking these hats. And then your other character's like, you know, if the police are coming up to make sure we stop doing this, does that mean the police want everyone to suffer and die? Is that... Is that what I'm supposed to get from this? So no, your character... I guess they're all your characters, but... One of your characters does not believe the party line on what's going on with the hats. And the player probably does not at that point either. Although I guess it depends how convincingly I write it. Um, needless to say, it was not convincing in the original. Um, so yeah, that's, as far as I can tell, that's why. Or what you're supposed to know up till this point. Um, oops. Also, there's a character called Big Mama that we don't see yet, we just hear about. So it's pretty much just like the sequel to Metal Gear Solid 4. But apparently, Big Mama does a lot. The providers, the hat people all report to Big Mama. Yes, yeah, so she is probably the final boss. I have no idea. But that sounds like final boss fodder to me. Yeah, that's how that's going. Also, it is literally just Big Mama written out phonetically in English. It's kind of great. I think there might, I don't know if this is true, but I think there might be a true ending that you get if you beat all the characters' stories, but I'm not sure. But the save file keeps track of how many times you've beaten the game, which makes me think they probably have that information for a reason. Yes, it's exactly like that. I was really confused at first, because I first played the game and they just referenced Big Mama, and it's like, what? What? Who? What are, you, what are you talking about? And then they keep referencing it, and it's like, okay, that's some sort of, like, weird, awful slug creature. I don't... I don't know. That was the impression I got. If Big Mama turns out to be, like, some weird energy slug monster, I would not be surprised. I could probably look in the assets to find out, but... I kind of don't want to know. I do kind of want to get sleep, though. I've been pretty bad about that recently. Now, I can give you a potential reason for why I've been bad at it, but... 
I don't need you all to judge me. Be all. Well, there's your problem. Duh. So I'm pretty sure it's not. I need a purple. I need a pur- oh, there we go. Yay. 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 But, uh... I bought, uh, caffeine off Amazon in convenient pill form to, uh, try to get me out of my, or get me off my butt in the morning, because that has been a perpetual struggle. And the obvious answer would be, oh, well, pff, that's the reason. But I don't think it is. It's not that much. And at, like, 9 in the morning, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be keeping me awake 12 hours later. so much more convenient than just coffee, even though I do like coffee. I'm not injecting it right into my bloodstream, it's dissolving through my stomach lining. Clearly. I've been busy, and I need to not be busy and tired. I can only be one of these things at once. So instead of being a perpetual graduate school bum, I figured at least I'll be a productive bum. I need... a red? Crap. No, God, jeez, no. Uh oh. No, we're still good. Don't worry. I just need a red now. That is painful. At this oh, come on! Oh, it... it just stopped being sound. I had the right combo to pop the whole thing, and I messed it up. But the way I see it, it's pretty much just like having a coffee in the morning, except no effort is involved. I can just go and take this coffee in convenient pill form, and then just go to work. But it's weird, because coffee's like this ritual you get used to. And you drink a bunch, and then you kind of realize, like, all right, well, drank that coffee. Now I expect to be energized. If you're just taking caffeine in a pill, it's not the same. There's no, like, social cue. Like, all right, well, time to wake up. It just sort of happens, and you're not really aware of it. 
like, I don't, I don't feel tired anymore. I don't, I don't know what happened, but I guess I'll just work. Like, I don't, I'm used to being tired, but I'm not. And then you just go. I mean, there is caffeine and chocolate. Do I get caffeine withdrawal? Oh yeah, all the time. I kind of just need a coffee to function at this point. The day does not begin until I have a coffee, and I mean that completely. Honestly, not like a, oh, I'm so addicted to coffee. <laughs> it's like literally, if I don't have anything, I will be incredibly unproductive and nothing will get done. Why do you like cold coffee? Cold coffee is coffee that deserves to be thrown away. I was thinking about the tolerance aspect, but at the same time, it's no more caffeine than I would normally take a day. The only difference is that now I don't need to drink it. You taste horrid. Now what? There is no now what. That's where that sentence, that's where that thought ends. I need a yellow and a blue and then some greens. Yeah. Yeah? No. 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 Oh, come on! You gave him the wrong piece in the right color. But yeah, the, the biggest thing I've noticed is that I, it feels like it lasts longer. As in, like, I don't come home from work and think, I'm going to take a nap for three hours. I just come home from work and it's like, I feel tired, but I can't actually sleep, so I might as well do something. I had one of those caffeine tabs uh one of the coffee soilants that was breakfast because I had to grab something and walk to work because I had a meeting early to talk about science and there was no time for actual food and then I had a small coffee later in the day that probably works out to like 400 and change milligrams. That man's name is Slum. So I'm naming my firstborn. Not skating Gramps. His name is Pappy Circuits. That's what we called him all throughout college. And yes, we actually talked about Streets of Rage, surprisingly, quite often. I was always Pappy Circuits.
I get... Sometimes I get plenty of sleep and it doesn't really help. I don't ask anyone for sponsorships. I want to be beholden to the man. I want to preserve free, independent journalism. Oh no, I have to bowl you over with this giant glowing orb. That used to be a baseball bat. Also, I've been eating a lot of seaweed. Which has a lot of iodine in it. And a prior blood test revealed that while my thyroid works, it could work better. It's like kind of borderline, do we do something about this? So I don't know. Maybe extra iodine is keeping me slightly more awake. Who can tell? Started doing both of those things pretty much at the same time, so it's hard to really tell which one is which. Whoops. iodine from like some back alley street dealer in a little bottle. What about protein and iron? Uh, I mean I lick skyscrapers occasionally. I thought that would pretty much cover the iron. I don't actually do that. Just Nah, it's not low vitamin D, I fixed that. That was the case. And I got a massive prescription of crazy powerful vitamin D, which I took for a while. And then I stopped a couple months ago because I had finished. Didn't feel any different. But the pills are green, so that was fun. It's like I was eating radiation. Whee! Pappy Circuits is the best character because you can just pick people up and throw them with your arm on a hinge. Yep. That's pretty good. They were not lime flavored. They might have been. I did not chew them. But I'm not discounting the possibility. No, God, you ate my turkey! I was using that. Bastards. Ash, no. Stop. Needless to say, this was removed from the American version. I stream for a couple hours. Sometimes there's a microphone, sometimes there isn't. I'm gonna go sleep soon, I think. Take that. I always thought that was a really bad color combination. My pink hair and weird green camo leotard. Like, why would you do that? Hmm. 
Not gonna make any money that way. Ah, she even know. Happy Circuits needs to do whatever that is. Reach out and touch somebody. Oh God. They implemented new cheering emotes today. Apparently there's like a Super Kappa, Super Pog Champ or something. If you give a lot of money and really want to let everyone know that you are reacting. Do I still have new emote slots from when Prime started? I don't know, I haven't checked recently. I wouldn't be surprised if everybody sort of gave up on that because I haven't been streaming in a while, so. For the sake of my own mental well-being, I'm gonna pretend yes. In reality, I have no idea. Whoops. Actually, I don't think you could pick animated emotes. I think Twitch just has special versions of, like, Kappa and PogChamp and crap. Yeah, Shiva... No, he didn't get kidnapped. He got taken back to base. Drew him from the fight. I don't really feel like playing Streets of Rage 3 anymore. I do feel like playing F2200. Uh, no, I don't. Fight the Ruskies. bad about talking about money. I feel very awkward. I don't want my secret to be revealed that I'm a member of the 1% and I could buy all of you if I wanted to. God damn it, I'm out of shooty guns, missiles. Frame rate always this bad. I don't want chaff. I need the hyper velocity rockets, which never actually hit anything because they don't home in, and aiming is impossible. Did any of those hit? No. Come on. Why? I wonder what frame rate this actually runs at. I guess I could count. Shoot the decoys. I lost track of the decoy. Oops. There it is. Be free, decoy. I wonder if this is considered acceptable when they were making the game. Or it's like, this is as good as it's gonna be, just ship it, we can't do better than this. I wonder if you remove the HUD, how much of the game you're actually... Actually, no, it renders the whole screen out. In retrospect. Um, what's the option for that? Yeah, you can have the whole thing out. Never mind. 
was gonna say, I wonder if they'd bother to render it out or only that little bit, and then block off the rest with the cockpit like borders on a Sega CD game, but no, it's all here. Oh crap, I'm out of shoot. No, wait, missiles. I have plenty of shoot. Then you can make it control like a car if you're a crazy person, or me as a kid. Because planes totally do this. Press down for down. Press down for frame rate. Cockpit. It rhymes with fuel slage. Hey. No one actually dies. They all parachute to safety. I know you can probably do this with the tail rudder, but still. Not to this extent. Deploy more chaff. I don't know, use all of it. Oh, we're out. Also, the music ends up off-key a lot, especially when you're shooting missiles, for whatever reason. Like, the guitar just gets confused. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. No. No. My french fries keep missing. Deploy some more chaff. Chaff. No. Hey. Now I'm gonna crash the plane. Everyone dies! Ah! I was just kidding. No one dies. Oh, this is so weird to play with steering wheel controls. Just straight up and down. What am I gonna give up this grad school thing and become the sound ship in a Sega Genesis? You really think I could? When am I gonna be the Yamaha something or other? No, come back! Deploy your boom to me! don't know where it actually needs to line the plane up. Because the plane that I'm chasing is 3D and I'm not. Nope, now I crashed into it. And broke in half. Wait, did I knock out my missiles? Oh no, I did. Yay. This is how you have to play the game. Press B and C to bring up cheats. Set everything to very fast, which doesn't really make a difference. And then unlimited missiles. And easy aiming, just screw it. Digital HUD. Oops. That's what happens when you cheat. Because then it could just do this to people. Just point the plane vaguely in the direction of an enemy. Now oh, the AMRAMs are the best missiles. The range is longer than the Sidewinders. And then you have the really bad ones, like the 
No, I think the Sparrow's actually okay, but it's only low range. Um, the Maverick, where you have to drive it. Which is not easy, nor fun. Oops. You can also crash it right back into yourself, which is pretty fun. But, like, it doesn't control to the point where it's feasible to drive into another rotating polygon. Also, I turn the control sensitivity up to very hot, or sensitivity up to very high, which doesn't make it any easier. Although now, I guess I have infinite hypervelocity rockets, so I might as well just be annoying about that. Oh, I don't have infinite hypervelocity rockets for whatever reason. Who's driving the plane? Nobody? It just kind of sits? And then you drive the missile into it? And then die? You know what a good game is? Dashin' Desperados. I lied, it's by Data East. Of course it's not a good game. What if you crossed the Rugrats, the Old West, and whoever did the illustrations for your Sunday school book? You'd have Dashin' Desperados. Game sucks. I'm the top desperado. B is jump, and I'm not okay with that. Now I need to blow this man up. Ha. Oh. We couldn't get the rights to Ode to Joy, so we kind of got close to it, but that's about it. Nothing makes me want to race more than Ode to Joy. Ouch. Oh, that's right, I forgot I had this button. Aha! You're four feet behind me. She'll never love you now. Smack. Hang on, this is gonna be great. Just watch, I'm gonna get the girl. She's going to be impressed by how I avoided that dog and threw bombs at this other man to win her affection. Probably. This is multiplayer, which is probably obvious given the fact that it's perpetual split screen. It's a lot more fun in multiplayer, not to say it's fun to begin with, but it's like the dumb kind of irritating fun that you can only really have with local multiplayer. Is he waiting at the end? Oh, he is. I wonder if I can hit him with the bomb before he runs and gets the girl, and then I'll snipe him. No. I'm dead. Just kidding. I'm not dead. Why does she have a lazy eye? Aha. That'll teach him. Look how self-satisfied he is when you jump. Look at that face. It's, ah. I'd throw bombs at me too if I looked like that. Ouch. I got the super boots, I think. Ow. Get him! Haha! -ha. Now I win. I'm the Dashinist. 
I put the desperate in desperado. Why didn't you just do that in the beginning? Oh no. She's been put in the car, which I need to explode. I don't know if I have to blow the car up or if that kills her. It's an ethical dilemma. I like how he keeps trying to back up over me. You don't like the music in this game. I'm gonna assume you beat the car up and have to hope it doesn't get to the end. Oh god. No, he's taking her for a drive. She wanted to get an ice cream. My time is negative at nine. Will you date me now? I know you just got kidnapped, but I figured this is a good time to ask. I did it. Why are we still competing? Why is she even giving him a chance? You got kidnapped by him. Why don't you date me? I didn't kidnap you. God, I don't even I don't even want you if that's the case. Like what's the point? Why would you even give this guy any consideration? Does the car section happen in two player? No. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while. Ouch. There's a porcupine conveniently in the middle of the road. No. Jerk. Damn it! Well, that was a game that somebody made and charged money for. Oh man, wait, where's 3D Golf? Ah, yes, the Devil's Course. Wait, is this the game I'm thinking of? I guess it is, because I have save data. Alright, sure. Please wait a moment. Okay. Oh yeah, this one. If you thought the frame rate in F22 Interceptor was bad, this is actually a slideshow. Also, I don't remember how to play. That's my address. I live in that ball. I do like the music in this game. Yep. That's what that button does. Sure. Uh, nope, that's not what I want. Uh, is that the terrain? I want a one wood. I... This is entirely too complicated for a golf game on the Genesis. Yeah, it's... That's fine. That's the stance I want. Nice shot. The music in this quality. Let's turn that up. Oops. Oh no, I hit the floating island. 
Oh yeah, this happened last time where I got stuck on a cliff and I couldn't do anything about it. Why am I using the putter? Is that a putter? It has an issue where it looks like the ball cleared a hill, but it didn't actually because of the way that they layer the sprites is not correct. What am I on? Wait. What? Wop wah. You're bad at things. Be careful, don't get the ball in water, blah blah blah, I know. Oops. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> wait, how did that even happen? Alright, sure. I can do that. Chipped it. It's not bad. Who am I? Wait. Am I even on this list? Oh, forget it. Devil's Course, hold two. My name is D. D. Bogey. So you have an albatross? Sure. Eagle, birdie, par, bogey, double bogey, triple boggy? How do you misspell bogey? It's right there. You already did it right. It's the legendary triple boggy. Remember that? Remember the worst bits of Sonic Adventure where you were big and you had to find Boggy? Ruin the game. sound effects to begin with. It's a prototype. They kept trying to put the sound effects in, but they ran into a triple boggy. This could have been something, man. When I was a kid, I was super into Sonic, and this was like the holy grail of what could have been. Because it's like Genesis era stuff, but with cool looking graphics and music that I thought was kind of neat. Different times of day that have different palettes and different music remixes. That's all pretty neat. And then, uh. You find a ROM of it on the internet, which. I don't know, it might have been on like the Simon Y website or Ice Knight's homepage or something. Sonic2beta.net, whatever that site is that doesn't exist anymore. It's like, wow! Look, look at this! It's This could have been cool! And you see it in screenshots, and you have really interesting screenshots that look like this, and it's like, wow! I wonder what's happening here! And then you play it, and you realize, oh, nothing! Literally nothing. And then this stage breaks if you run too fast, you just fall through the floor. 
Oops. Also, if you go to the top, there's a thing that says Sonic, but it's upside down. Not really a huge fan of that aesthetic, but you know. It's got that good Sonic and Knuckles. Oh, music style. I should sleep soon. Mm, do I have anything else interesting? I Pulse Man, which is not a good game. Wait, no, Pulse Man is. I'm thinking of uh, Time, whatever the hell it is. The Duck. Time Duck. Oh, wait, was Time Killers the last Genesis game, or was this that two on two fighting thing? So, Sega had an answer to Donkey Kong Country. It was not called Time Killers. This is the fighting game where a guy just has a saw and you can decapitate people. His name is... Was it Rancid or was it... Or, I, don't, I don't remember. This game sucks. Check out that great frame rate. What's the game I'm thinking of? The last release Genesis game. It was not Kyle, or not called Time Killers. It was um, I don't remember. Great animation. Listen to the music. Oh, that's right. You get decapitated and limbs fall off and stuff. So in one respect, it actually is very innovative because they had to redraw sprites for your character in different stages of completeness. Um, Time Killers is not a good game. What is the name of the game I'm thinking of? Was it Deadly Moves? That wasn't it. What is Deadly Moves? Moves! Deadly! I don't have a password. Oh, it's the game with Warren in it! Forgot about deadly moves. None of this does anything useful. You won. Thanks. I did. It's true. I did win. I want to be Warren. I don't want to be Joe. Oh man. Why can't I be Warren? I don't want to be any of these people. And now it's somehow stuck. can't select a stage or anything. Great. I don't know what buttons do what. They all seem to kind of not... Collar's not too tight. You obviously don't know anything about fashion. I want to be Warren. 
Oh, there we go. Yes! Up to jump. Hooray. I don't want to be warned anymore. I don't know what happened. I somehow broke it. I'm gonna go to bed now. Good night. Don't play video games, they're all bad. <laughs>